Welcome to Barely Homesteading. Today we're going to talk garden. So this year has been a little bit of a strange year. We had snow and freezing temperatures right up until the end of May almost the end of May, and within two weeks, we had temperatures that were up in the high 80s, which for us is August weather. Uh, it was very warm. And now we are back to our highs being in the 50s. And as you can see, it's starting to rain. Uh, so we may end up ducking into our hoop house if it gets bad. So it's kind of been all over the place and my, my plants and my seeds are, you know, is it too hot, is it too cold, is it too hot, too cold? or they come up in the opposite temperature of what they need, um, just has completely killed them, basically. Um, some of our things are still doing okay, and we'll go around and we'll take a look at those. Uh, but first, let's go back in time, and we'll talk about the planting. All right, so it's about May 15th, and we are finally, finally getting to start planting our cold crops. So we are working on planting some peas right now, um, we don't see any more snow on the forecast, and right now we're not forecasted to get below about 40 degrees at night. So we'll see. We may start planting some of our seedlings, things like that, some of the cooler ones. The warmer ones obviously still have to wait. We won't be able to plant those till June. It's just been a cold, late spring this year. And so we're just barely getting started. Um, many of you guys probably already have full gardens growing. <laughs> I'm a little envious. We're still looking a little sparse behind me. But it's coming. It always comes. No matter how long the winter is, it keeps coming. And our soil is looking really good after all that manure that we put in it last year. So that um, has broken down over the winter. And I'm hoping that this good soil will give us some really good, strong, healthy plants with lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. So we'll see. We're going to get to planting. All right, so we did do some sifting of compost this spring. We did a lot last fall, so we didn't end up getting a whole lot. Things don't compost quite as fastly in the winter because of the freezes. Uh, everything is frozen. And a lot of times in drier climates, there's not enough water. Now, we get a lot of snow, so we ended up with some pretty, you can see it's actually pretty moist right now. Pretty rich. Pretty rich compost. Okay, and we're just going to, what we got, we are going to sprinkle some on our raspberries and just wherever we have room, we can do that. So one of the things that we are trying to do um, to help prevent aphids, we are planting some trap plants, which basically is a plant that the aphids like even more than your vegetable plants. Um, since we had yeah, a big, too. you too, you like them more. Since we had a big problem with our broccoli, we're, we're planting some of our little broccoli yeah. seedlings. And we are going to plant um, some nasturgeum. Nasturgeum is a really good trap plant, supposedly for aphids. We'll let you know how it goes. And so I'm just going to plant a couple of plants down at this half of the bed yeah. and a couple down at the other half. Yeah. And that way, when they get covered with aphids, because all the aphids have gone to those, we can just pull those up. Yeah. And throw them away. We probably won't want to compost them because we won't want yeah. those aphids wintering over in our compost pile and then spreading them over all of our beds. Yeah. So here's hoping. So today is June 3rd and it's finally warm enough to plant our garden. We've planted a few of the colder crops. Um, some of them start. They, some of them didn't survive the colder nights. Um, some that we planted as seeds are coming up. Our peas are all sprouting. So we're going to take stock of the garden, see what's there, and finish planting it and get this garden going. Do you have my garden map? Are you writing down that we're planting broccoli? Not quite. Not quite? Were you talking to the turkeys? The turkeys are the
So it's time to plant the potatoes. Potatoes grow fairly well up here as long as you have good drainage. We had a couple years where we didn't get the drainage right and had very poor crops. So we are working on that now. We've mixed up a wheelbarrow full of some topsoil and some mushroom compost that we just got at our local hardware store. If you've got some on hand, great. Um, wherever you get it, just make sure it's decent quality and hopefully weed seed free. We have some big pots here and we're going to have Lumberjack drill a couple drainage holes in the bottom so we get that drainage right and the water doesn't fill up from the bottom and rot the potatoes. All right, so I'm coming up about an inch, inch and a half from the bottom, and I'm going to drill a three-quarter inch drainage hole. doesn't immediately drain out. Gives it a little bit of time for it to catch at the bottom and soak, make sure that the dirt gets soaking wet. But if it is too full, we can just tip it up just a little bit and drain the excess water out. And one of the things that we need to do to make that possible is we put a little layer of rocks down at the bottom. The rocks do make it heavy. Now once we put these in place, we are not planning on moving them, and so that's not a problem. We'll still be able to just tilt them to drain water if we need, but we won't be moving them around the garden. If you have a pot that you want to be moving, um, so you need it lighter, you can also use like styrofoam, cut up styrofoam, or those packing peanuts, anything that kind of creates some air gaps, but is a little lighter. And that's just up to personal preference what you prefer. All right, so these are pretty big, pretty deep containers. So for right now, we filled them about two thirds of the way full, and we're going to plant our potatoes in them. When those potatoes have grown and it's kind of filled the soil and we can start to see the potatoes on the top of the soil, we fill it the rest of the way and then it will grow another layer of potatoes on top of the previous layer. And that works really well to just help maximize how many potatoes you get, maximize your crop. The potato plant will be super big and as part of it will get buried when you do that. But as long as there's leaves up on top, It'll be fine. Those uh, leaves that end up getting buried, those nodes where the leaves attach, will end up shooting out more things that will grow the potatoes. I think that's how it works. <laughs> Aren't you the Homer cultivator? Minor. Minor. And that was, excuse me, that was 23 years ago, 22 years ago. So all these little roots that are growing, it's okay to just plant those in there, plant the whole potato, or you can cut it into halves to spread it and get more. All right, one word of advice, if your potatoes come in net bags, try to get them out of the bags before they start growing their roots because it is very hard to get these roots back out of the net bag without pulling them off the potato. Yeah, learn from our mistakes. <laughs> you can see our strawberries are looking very lush. We've got lots of blossoms on them and we've got lots of strawberries forming. Now, if we can keep baby bear out of them, we might actually be able to harvest a few. 
over here, you can see that our potatoes are coming up quite well. And our turnips in this burrow at the bottom are also doing rather well. We've got some wild roses that I haven't been able to, haven't had the heart to cut out. So I've just let them grow. Okay, our pumpkins are doing pretty well, and these all started from seeds. So they are maybe only about a month old. Our, our squash, however, is not doing quite as well. Uh, they have not liked the temperature fluctuations. Our cabbage is coming up down at that end. Um, the cauliflower isn't doing quite as well. But we have to blame that on the chickens. Um, the day after I planted the seeds, we let the chickens out to free range and they made a whole bunch of little dust wallows in the bed. And I don't know if they ate the seeds or if they just ended up getting buried or rearranged or what, but um, the cauliflower's just not coming up great. So until things get more established, the chickens are not allowed out of their chicken run area. The peas are coming up quite nicely. And the beans are just definitely on their way. This bed, however, was supposed to be our broccoli. I planted the starts that we had started inside, and I planted about two packages of seeds. I'm not sure if we have a single thing coming up. The green things that you see, well, they're, that's a weed. This and those other ones that are right in the middle are the trap plants that we planted to get all the aphids. They may get all the aphids just for the simple fact that there's not really any broccoli coming up. Oh wait! Two little broccolis coming up. Barely starting out of their seeds. Those are the first little leaves. And it's, we're less than a week till the end of June. So who's, who knows? And if it goes back up to 80 degrees, the broccoli may not like that. So we'll just see what happens this year. It's always an adventure with high altitude gardening. Our raspberries look very lush and green. The problem that we're having with our raspberries is that every winter they die back to their roots. And as raspberries fruit on second year canes or older, we never get any fruit because every year it's brand new growth. So this year down at that very, very end, we planted a couple of, uh, we bought a couple and planted them of zone three raspberries. We are not a zone three, but the uh, raspberries for the zone that we are in are not working. So we thought we'd go hardcore and we'll see if they winter over. It's always a guessing game. Inside our hoop house, it's usually warmer here than it is outside, even though the ends are open. We're working on um, getting our permanent enclosures on to open it up to the sun a little bit more, but also enclose it to keep it warmer. Even so, our tomatoes are coming in nice. Look, they're kind of lush and green. We've had some cucumber seeds coming up and our peppers are all looking great and this one we actually bought big with flowers on it but you can see look at that pepper I mean nah, you can hear the storm this is really good for peppers here and inside here it says that it is almost 60 degrees Whereas I think we're probably around 50 outside of the hoop house. Maybe 55. Anyway. So, we still haven't planted our apple trees either. We'll have a video about those when we do that. And a whole lot of explanation about what these apple trees and pots are. So, your gardens are probably far, far beyond what ours are for this time of year. But... Ours are coming up. They always do, eventually. And we're excited to see what we get this year. Until then, we hope that you guys use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Thank you. Bye.